Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. Rudy put out a video about two days ago now talking about a gap in sales on Ravnica Remaster collector boxes of about four days when there were no sales straight for a four-day period on TCG Player and talking about the potential implications of that. And I thought, you know, these are the kind of data that we have from the past and we can compare it to other sets. We can see, is this really significant? Is it one-off? Is it maybe finally the end of the world that people always tell us is imminently coming? And so if we just come over here and look at what Rudy was looking at on TCG Player, and we click into here to the sales, and you can see from December 5th to December 10th. So there were sales on the 5th and on the 10th, but from the 6th through the 9th, there were no sales. And in the normal kind of way that we talk about this on this channel with our data plotting tool, that would be from release minus 34 days through release minus 37 days. So if we come over to our plotting tool now, and we look at it, I've set this lower left plot to be daily boxes sold, which is what we're interested in. Normally this is cumulative spend. And then I'm looking from the beginning of the pre-release period of each product we're gonna look at through release day. And so we're interested on this horizontal axis, the minus 34 to minus 37 area. So right in here, and we can see the Lost Caverns of Ixalan we had low sales up to about five boxes per day on that. If we take Lord of the Rings Special Edition from that minus 34 to minus 37, we'll see we had a bonus buck sale here that really skews the data and makes it uncomparable. Doctor Who, not a very well-received set. And minus 34 to minus 37 in here, there were several days with zero sales in that area. And you can see, oh, can I grab this? Yeah, so one sale there and then to the left and right, zero sales for a couple days. And so we might say that maybe Ravnica Remastered is being received in pre-release about as badly as Doctor Who was. If we come over to the next one, Wilds of Eldraine, minus 34 to minus 37. So it was selling six, eight, nine boxes a day. Commander Masters, well, this would have been a bonus buck sale. So again, skews the results right in the middle. We'll throw up Lord of the Rings here for the lulls, even though it would have been selling great. Yeah, 40, 50 boxes a day. And March of the Machines from 34 to 37. See, pretty weak. What is this? Eight boxes and at the minus 38, 10 boxes. Okay. And I know the one that you really want to see is Dominaria Remastered because that is the most comparable they were both remastered sets. They were both released in January of their respective years. And so they both had pre-release periods at the same time. And what we see here when we look at it is we had last year's Black Friday bonus buck sale here at the minus 38. And then in mid-December last year, we had another bonus buck sale sometime around the 13th or the 15th if my memory serves. And so we have these two big spikes here that really skew the data and the low point in this area was eight boxes per day. So Ravnica Remastered objectively is selling worse in that same kind of minus 34 to minus 37 day time period than even the best comparison Dominaria Remastered is. Now, there are, I, I hesitate to say there are a lot of mitigating factors. You know, the, the seasonal factor is obviously Christmas. It's people spending money on other things. And uh, not directing as much money towards magic. Now, of course, that would be reflected in these Dominaria remastered sales data right here. Um, the other additional thing that you have on top of this is you just have another year of negativity. You have the blowout and overprinting of Dominaria remastered. You have how badly it sold, how consistently it sold under wholesale price, and you have the lack of comp confidence in Ravnica remastered from Watsi already pre-dumping the draft boxes on Amazon two months before release at below wholesale prices. So it looks like there is something there. It is objectively selling worse than Dominaria Remastered has. It's selling worse than the other recent collector boxes. And is it the end of the world? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Like Rudy said in his video, much depends on the actual print runs, distribution waves, how it's received, how good of a set, chase cards, other things. So at this point, it does look bad. It looks worse than Dominaria Remastered. But again, we'll have to just wait and see how it turns out. I think what we've consistently seen 
is the market rejecting collector boxes at over around 200 to 220 per box in most cases. And especially standard sets, there's very few standard collector boxes that have managed to stay over release day price. And this is just kind of another case of it. You know, people are expecting the price of these collector boxes to come down. They're expecting card stores to get hosed once again on overpriced premium products that the market just does not support. And the reality is the market objectively in its secondary prices says that collector boxes just aren't worth that 200 to 250 price range that Watsy wishes they would sell at retail. And so my advice is don't pre-order these, don't buy them early, just wait. Watsy's going to have to prove itself. And yeah, maybe you'll miss out. Maybe I'll miss out. Maybe I'll wait too long to buy. Maybe they've actually reduced print runs. I'm highly skeptical. But maybe this will be the time that we all miss out. And then we move on and we readjust our strategy for the next release merely a month later. And that's something to keep in mind in the TCG world is there's always more opportunity. There's always more releases. And if you miss out on one or two products because you were making a safe conservative bet, that's good. That means in the long run, you're probably going to have better performance for it. So let me know what you think, guys. I know I've been a little short on the videos lately. I've been sick again, and I've been doing a lot of work with my normal day job. So patrons, if you need something, just keep messaging me, talking to me over on Patreon. Otherwise, join the Patreon, and then I can get to you. So uh, thanks to everyone who makes this content possible, especially my generous supporters on Patreon. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and join me on Final Train.